Hey guys, this video is a um, video about density and something that happens when you heat and cool things. All right, so let's get started here. Now, what is density? Density is the ratio of the mass of an object to its volume. So it's going to be mass divided by volume. Mass will typically be in grams, and your volume, depending upon whether it's a liquid or solid, will have the units ml or cm, respectively. So once again, ml is for uh, a liquid. Centimeters cubed is length times or times height for a solid. Okay. Now, there are other volume units, but these are just the common ones just to get started on. Now, we can simply say density is the amount of matter in a given volume. Okay. I might throw that out there once or twice. You might hear that um, as well. So here's the formula. Density equals mass over volume. Okay. So once again, solids are grams per centimeters cubed, and liquids are grams per ml. Now, there's something called a density triangle, which um, I really didn't have in high school, but I, I came across it. And it's very simple. So basically, what you do is, um, as long as you have uh, the M on the top, OK, as long as your M's on top, D and V are on the bottom, you can draw a little triangle around it. And you can come up with the other equations for it as well, or um, density formula. So density equals mass divided by volume, right? So over here, I'm going to write the formula. Density equals mass over volume, right? So it's very simple. If you want to solve for density, you cover D with your hand. It's M over V. Now, if you're looking for mass, mass equals D times V. So if you cover up M, you get D times V. And if you're looking for volume, you cover up V and you get M over D. Okay, so once again, if you're looking to solve for one of these, you simply cover that variable. And the ones that are exposed still are the ones that you put in your equation. So if you're looking for density, cover D, you get M over V. If you're looking for M, cover M, you get D times V. If you're looking for V, you get V equals M over D. That's it. Okay, that's what the density triangle is trying to tell you. Okay. Now, density comes into play with lots of different things. There's plastics, there's wood that have different densities, there's liquids, etc. So density, this is a good demonstration here. You can see that the people uh, in each square are going to be right here and here. You can see this square here has more people, which are represented by the circle. So this square here is more dense than this square. This square is less dense than this one. Okay. Also, you can see that this square is small, this square is large, but how many people are there? Well, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this square is larger, meaning less people per volume. So this one over here is going to be more dense than this one. Okay. This one's going to have a lower density. Okay, because the area or sorry, the volume is bigger. Now, um, we're going to get into uh, looking at liquids and whatnot. So density can be related to water. And I like going over this, uh, basically the, the simple density table. And before I show it to you, um, a few things you need to know that for things to float in water. All right which water has density of 1.00 grams per centimeters cubed at 4 degrees Celsius, which is very cold, above freezing. Things that have a lower density than 1 will float. Things that are greater, uh, have a greater density than 1 will sink. Okay, so here's our density table. You have your material, 
and your density. Okay, so as you look through here, you can see that you have your solids that have densities, and then you have some liquids that have their densities, and you have gases. Yes, gases have densities as well. The gases that have higher densities are the ones that are going to basically dissolve into water easily. The ones that have lower density will be floating above water. Okay, the things that have a higher density will sink in the water. Things that have a lower density will float in the water. So this is like a comparison table. So when you're looking at two different substances, you can figure out which one will float or which one will sink based on the numbers given. Okay, and remember, water is at 4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if you look at ice, ice has a density of 0.92, which tells us that 92% of the ice, this iceberg here, is below water. This small percent of of it is above water. It's floating at the surface. It's not floating directly on top. Okay. Ice still has mass. Then you have like a density rainbow. You have oil, which has a lower density of water, corn syrup, which has a higher density than water, so it's going to sink, whereas corn oil floats. Okay. Now, um, if you look at different substances here, you can see increasing density mass per unit volume. Um, here you have the same mass of each substance, all right, but a different volume. And if you look down here, you can see their densities are different. The density of lithium is lower. Even though it has a large volume, its density is quite small compared to leads. All right. Lead is quite heavy per its volume. All right. So lead has a greater density than aluminum, than water, than lithium. So these are things that you should make comparisons to if you had to compare them to understand which one has a greater density than the other. Now, let's look at some density calculations, okay? Whenever you have a density calculation, you must remember significant figures. That's very, very important. Okay, so when you get a problem, you have to look at the given numbers. Okay, let's look at a few different calculations going over the three formulas, okay? So first here, we have um, a solid object has a mass of 3.1 grams and A volume of 13.2 centimeters cubed. Calculate the density. Okay, so density equals mass over volume, correct? Now what you have is, you have in your problem, you have your mass, which is here, and your volume, which is here. Okay, the mass has two significant figures, the volume has three. Let's plug in our numbers, 3.1 grams over 13.2 centimeters cubed. Okay, this is where you'll need a calculator, and you'll have to calculate your answer. Okay, and in this case, I get 0 0.23 grams per centimeters cubed. Okay. Now, next one, a lead ball has a mass of 5.9 grams and a density of 11.35 grams per centimeters cubed. Calculate its volume, okay? So volume, if you remember the uh, table, volume equals mass divided by density, okay? Our mass is 5.9 over 11.35 grams per centimeters cubed. Okay. Now, in this case, the um, grams will cancel out. Okay. So we will get 0 0.52 centimeters cubed. Okay, 
Now this centimeters cubed is in the denominator of this fraction. Okay, so we call that reciprocal. So if we think of one over one over x, that equals x. Okay, so it's basically the same way we got centimeters cubed. Okay. Now the next equation uh, is a mass calculation. An aluminum cube has a length of two centimeters on each side. What is its mass if aluminum's density is 2.70 grams per centimeter cubed? Okay, now we're dealing with a cubed. So that means a cube okay, has two, two, two. Okay, so its volume, okay, is 2.0 centimeters times 2.0 centimeters times 2.0 centimeters. Okay, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8.0 centimeters cubed. When you multiply, you add the exponent. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Now let's calculate the mass. Mass equals volume times density. Okay. So our volume is 8.0 centimeters cubed times our density, which is 2.70 grams per centimeters cubed. Okay, now our centimeters cubed cancel out. Centimeters cubed cancel out. All right, in this case, I got 21.6 grams. All right, and we want to round it to the correct number of significant figures, which is going to be two. So I'm going to say 22 grams. Okay. Now, that's how you calculate those three problems. They're very similar. Anytime you get a density problem, you just use a formula. Watch the sig figs, plug it in, cancel units, make sure the right units. Okay, like mass is grams, it ends in grams. Make sure everything is evaluated correctly. Now, last thing I want to go over, which is important, is what happens to the density of a substance when its temperature changes? So let me bring this up a little bit. Now, you can heat something up, it gets hotter. Cool something down, it gets cooler. But something happens to that volume, okay? There's expansion and contraction. It's a major um, science in engineering, especially if you're building a bridge or railroad tracks, things expand and contract, telephone pole wires, etc. Okay, so as you increase the temperature of a substance, you increase the volume. Okay, when something gets hot, it gets bigger. Therefore, based on the fraction, okay, density is mass over volume, you have in the denominator of density an increase in the number. Therefore, the density decreases. Okay, as you decrease the temperature of a substance, you decrease the volume. Therefore, density increases. Okay, so on this one, in the denominator of the fraction, the uh, temperature goes down, therefore the volume decreases, which actually causes the fraction to get larger, or that your answer gets get larger. Okay, but remember, mass will remain constant for both A and B here. Okay, so that's something important to remember and be aware of when you're looking at density and whatnot. Okay, there's a few demos I can do with uh, density, which are pretty cool. I have a density ball I can show you guys that in class too. Okay, all right guys, that's it for calculating density. We're gonna look at water displacement on the next video. All right, bye.